Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Holistic Human Performance Podcast. I am your host, Jenna Bradshaw. And today we are really going to take a deep dive into energy and how energy is everything. And I want to go over these five energetic codes that really changed my life, changed my outlook on how I view life, how I show up in life, and how I was able to change my mindset for the better and to live a thriving life. So energy is everything, like I had mentioned before. For those of us who maybe don't understand energy, um, you know, this computer that I'm on is energy. The microphone that I have is energy. I'm an energetic being. This pen holds energy. And it's really this vibrational frequency that is emitted from a very fast rate that is emitted. And that is what creates the energy. And so this is physics, right? So let's talk about the energetic codes, because this is very important, I believe, especially for anyone who's looking to change their lives. Maybe maybe you're someone who has some form of disease and you want to enhance your health. Maybe you're someone who is trying to manifest more money. Maybe you're trying to manifest, um, you know, the love of your life. Maybe you're just trying to be the best version of yourself or create, you know, a new business. These are going to be the key components to how you can get there. And again, this is just the foundation because energy is everything. It's just like the law of attraction. That's the first universal law. If you do not understand the law of attraction and how that works and abiding by that, then you're not going to be able to get to the other universal laws. So this is kind of the same thing where energy is that foundational uh, point for each of us to understand so that we can be creators of our lives and thrive, not just survive. I'm all about that. Okay. So the first, let me just get this. The first energy code is energy is everything. Just like I said, this pen I am an energetic being. The curtains behind me are, hold energy. Every single thing holds energy. And the sooner that you can understand that, the radical shift that you can make in your life. And then number two, your life is a reflection of your energy. This is the law of attraction. Like attracts like. And the law of attraction is always on. Like it doesn't shut off. Like there's no stopping that. It's just how every single thought that we create in our minds, every single thought that we think that is part of the law of attraction. And really the energy that's behind it is what brings to life those manifestations, those things that you didn't even think would come to life. So if you're thinking these negative thoughts all day long, then mm, you're probably not going to attract the best things in your life. It's going to be more challenging. You're going to have more obstacles. You're going to feel resistance against yourself and what you're doing. You're not going to be happy. So these thoughts provoke emotions and that emotion is what gives the thought and manifestation energy. So your emotions are really the energy and those thoughts, they go hand in hand. The thought provokes an emotion. Again, I speak about this in pretty much everything I do. It's like the foundation of my teachings. Your thought provokes an emotion, that emotion provokes and a desired outcome and physical response in your body and the world and external world around you. Your inner world is a mirror of your external world. So if you're someone who is maybe suffering from anxiety every day or someone who's really fearful of being who they want to be in life, that is going to show up in your external world and it's going to show up in your physical body and you're not going to you're not going to be happy you're going to you're going to fall into a victim mindset and that really is what sets you back and a lot of people get stuck in that victim mindset i was there a lot of people were there i was at that point when you know i was going through the healing journey after cancer, it was kind of like a survivor's guilt, why me kind of thing. And the sooner I was like, wait, I'm here to like do really big things and help other people. Um, and 
you know, the sooner that I was able to tap into my mission, which is to help other people tap into their own inner healing and realize that they can take ownership of their health. It's their birthright. The sooner things started to just pan out for me and work beautifully. So again, energy is everything. That's number one. Number two, your life is a reflection of your energy. And then we get to number three. You are the creator of your life. So those, see how those kind of flow into each other. And by the way, these energy codes are by Dr. Sue Mortar. Her book, Energy Codes, is amazing. I highly recommend it. This is where I learned all this information and kind of applied it and tweaked it to, you know, kind of what I teach. So the third one is you are a create, you are the creator of your life. You, not anybody else. And this is where people fall into the victim mindset. It's like, oh, well, she can have that. I can. He can have that. I can't. Why not? Why can't you have that? You're the only one that's setting the boundaries and limits on yourself. And again, your energy is what shows up in a room. That's your true essence. When you walk into a room, you know, I've I've heard people say like, oh, like people ignore me when I walk into a room. That's because that's your energy. You're not being vibrant. You're not the one that's, you know, you're kind of like in your shell and you don't want anyone to notice you. Like there's a deeper meaning behind that, of course. And like, that's something that has to be, you know, worked on and uh, come to realization. But again, you're the creator of your world. Nobody else is going to do it for you. You're the one that has to do it for yourself Nobody wrote my book for me. I wrote the book. My spiritual team helped me, of course. But, you know, I was the one who had to take that aligned action and that physical action to get it done. So if you have something that you want to create and you want to bring to life, you're the only one that's going to be able to do it. Like, obviously, you're going to have help. You're going to have a team behind you. But you're the one that takes the actions. You're the one that's going to take that aligned action. It's not busy work. It's aligned action where you're productive and it's getting you further and further and further down the line. Again, it's not a linear thing. Like it's, it's all over the place. It's a windy road. The journey is not, it's not simple. It's not easy, but we have to make the best of it. And, you know, I think when we can live more in a joyous mindset and a happy mindset this is not toxic positivity this is let's be real like you're playing a victim role like how do we change that so you can show up you know as the best version of yourself for other people so you can shine your light for other people give them hope give them inspiration share your story so that's number three number four your you I'm sorry number four your creation your life is always expanding. So um, your the way that you are creating things, it's always expanding. It's always getting expansive. It's very spiralic how it works and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you're playing small, then you're really just suppressing yourself. You're really just restricting, suppressing, and that probably doesn't feel good. So if you're playing small and you're having these feelings of like, doubt, worry, fear, restriction, anger, why me victim mentality, you're not able to, you're you're not tapping into your soulful self. You're not tapping into your true essence to allow yourself to be expansive, to allow your creation to become expansive, right? So again, for example, my book, A Survivor Story, I knew that when I wrote that book, that I was going to be writing another one. And guess what? I'm almost done. I'm pretty much done with my second book, which is going to be coming out this year. And I already know what I'm writing for my third book. It's always expanding. And I have the people in mind, right? I'm doing it obviously for my healing journey, but I'm doing it to help other people so that they're like, oh, like it's really just sparking their light where they're like, oh, I can do this too. And really I've had so many people hit me up and ask me, hey, like, how did you get to where you're at? How did you become an author? What did you do? And I'm able to kind of guide them and show them I'm not a master at all. Like, I still am like, what am I doing? But, you know, at least I can show them some form of 
pathway and guidance and coaching where it's like, Hey, like, this is what I did. Maybe try this, maybe reach out to this person, maybe look up, you know, maybe read this book. This might help you. That's just how I roll. So, you know, your creation is going to be very expansive. This holistic human performance, I was resisting doing a podcast for a very long time. And then finally it was like, dude, what are you doing? Just start your podcast. Stop it already. And here we are. (laughs) So this is something that, you know, was super important to me. And again, it's expansive, right? Holistic human performance next year is not going to be what it is today. I know it's going to expand. I know that it's going to get bigger and I know that it's going to help more people along the way. And that is the mindset that you need to step into. And then we get to the last one. Number five, the purpose of your life is to discover your creatorship. A lot of people may not know what they're doing, right? They may not know what they want to do in life. They may not know their gifts, their talents. And this is where that like, why me victim mentality comes in. And, you know, listen, I've been there, right? Like I started out in a, like, I've been in the health, fitness, and wellness industry for over a decade. I mean, I I was born into it, really. I've been doing this for my whole life. But what I originally thought was going to be the end goal is not the end goal. Like, it's much bigger than that. Where I started off, where, you know, I started off in strength and conditioning. I was training athletes. I was an athlete myself. I was, like, you know, really in my masculine energy. And then, you know, that kind of shifted. And then I got into more of a corporate big box gym and I worked at Lifetime Fitness. I ran a department, I grand opened a a club. So it's kind of these different things where, you know, you kind of have to realize and you need to look back at these little breadcrumbs or at like breadcrumbs from the past and breadcrumbs as you move forward in life and know that you're the creator of what your life is going to look like in the future. And what you maybe have done in the past is not going to look like what your future is going to look like. So I started off, you know, I went into um, Lifetime Fitness. I was there for like, I think seven years or something like that. And I was in my early, early 20s. I think I was like 21, 22 when I started there. And you know, I knew that that I knew personally, instinctually, that that was going to be a stepping stone for me. And it, I mean, I was right. That's exactly how it played out. Then I got into the private sector, working with um, my family fitness business with my parents, Bradshaw Personal Fitness. I still coach with them. And then, you know, I kind of had to look and be like, okay, you know, once I started writing my book, I was like, okay, what do I really want to do? And of course I love training people. Like I love helping people get to the next level with their fitness goals and their nutritional goals and their health. But I was like, there's more to this. And that's when I tapped into the holistic health and wellness industry. When I started becoming, when I started becoming more spiritually awakened, um, you know, and I had a breakthrough moment, which I spoke about in one of my previous episodes, uh, fear of a cancer reoccurrence that really opened my eyes. That was like a breakthrough moment where I was like, no, 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 you're going to be doing more. And I had to be okay with that. I had to be like, all right, all right, I'm moving on to another level. And here we are today, holistic human performance and all these cool things I've been able to do, speaking events, writing, sharing my story, coaching, helping others, um, teaching at retreats, spiritual retreats. Like it's so much fun and I love it. Never, if you would have asked me five years ago what I would be doing, this would not have been my answer. So you have to kind of go with the flow, but also have a plan. And going based off these five energy codes, it's like, okay, I know that energy is everything. And what I am thinking and how I am in my life, like that's going to bring things that's that that is going to mirror my external world those are the things that are com- going to come to me and with that it's like okay i'm creating this is part of my journey here as a human being like we're all creating we're all here to heal evolve and ascend um and ascend not meaning being better than anybody else it's like shining your light brighter so that you can be 
that inspiration for other people? How are you helping the collective basically? And then, you know, with that, it's like, okay, what are you creating? Like, what is your creatorship? What, what are your gifts? What are your talents? Right. I'm really great with people. I'm really great. I I'm a leader. I have very great leadership skills. I'm a space holder. I hold space for people. I coach. I love coaching. I love getting people from a point A to point B and then them looking back and be like, wow, that was like amazing. Like, I can't believe I did that and guiding them through that journey. And, um, you know, I love energetic healing. I love working with people's energies and helping them release these trapped, dense emotions, working through that shadow work. So it kind of got me to this point where I'm like combining all of the things that I've learned up until this point. And it really took me to also launching Cancer Fear Freedom Program and really helping people who are struggling with the healing journey of the trauma that surrounds cancer and, you know, the fear that comes along with it. Because again, if you think ill thoughts, you will become ill. If you think well thoughts, you will become well. And being able to hold space for those people who are either battling cancer, who are struggling after the journey, once they're done with cancer and they're like, okay, now what? Like, what do I do with my life now? How do I get healthy? Like, I don't want to be scared when I'm going, you know, to get my, um, my checkups, you know, getting ultrasounds, x-rays, like CAT scans, like, you know, you don't want to be so scared where you're like absolutely tweaking out and you can't handle it. And you're having panic attacks or having anxiety. Like those are the people that I really help, um, you know, caregivers who went through a different journey with seeing their loved one go through cancer. And, you know, maybe people who are fearful of, being diagnosed with cancer because it runs in their family. So those are really the people that I work with. And I'm really excited to bring this program to life. It starts February 13th. And with this, I will be going over the five energy codes and also these other codes and energetic, energetic codes really that go along with this. So, um, I have these five buckets, which is part of my method called the sacred connection method. Uh, it goes into mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, and energetics that ties all of the buckets together. So I'll be really taking a deep dive into energy work and it, I call it the sacred energetic connection. And that will also be something we're going over in the program. But really, it's just knowing that everything is connected, everything is energy. And the sooner that you can realize that, the sooner that you can be more at peace with life, because really, that's the goal. Who wants to be stressed out every day, having anxiety and or depression and miserable? Because I know I don't and I want to thrive in life. And that's really what I'm here to help people with. So if you want to thrive in life, then you need to start somewhere. You need to start taking aligned action. And this does not mean that you do one day of meditation and think, oh, I'm I'm cured, I'm healed. No, that's not how it works. You have to really be intentional with your healing journey and be like, all right, I know that this is gonna be hard, but listen, you have to start somewhere. And you know, why would you wanna be fearful of life or holding on to this trauma that happened two years ago, seven years ago. Like, what's the point of that? It's a lesson, of course, but you're holding on to these emotions that is affecting your entire energetic system. We are energetic beings. And when we hold on to like very dense, low vibration emotions and energy, this is what causes disease in the body. It seeps from our energetic field and it seeps into the body. We have a couple of different layers, which is something that I, I'm going to be discussing also. Um, I have a couple of classes too, like check out on holistichumanperformance.co. I have a couple of recorded classes that goes over really in depth the energy codes and um, our energetic layers and how that plays a role in our health and well-being but I'll also be taking a really deep dive into that in the Cancer Fear Freedom Program. And again, who wants to be miserable in life? I know I don't, and I want to thrive. And I know if you're listening to this, you want to thrive too. So if you need any extra help, 
you can find me at holistichumanperformance.co. I have a ton of live classes, workshops, pre-recorded classes. Um, I have courses that are up there where you can, they're self-paced, you can learn at your own pace. And also, obviously, the Cancer Fear Freedom Program, which enrollment is completely open, and that will be open until February 12th, and we start February 13th. So if you are interested, reach out. You can message me, email me. Um, All my information is on the website as well. If you enjoyed this episode, like, share, and subscribe. You can check this out on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, on six different platforms. And you can check out the full recording on YouTube. So I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.